How can you tell if someone is narcissistic in your life? Does it even matter? People ask these questions a lot. They often worry about whether the person in their life is narcissistic or is just a bad person or if it's even them that is the problem. So if you're thinking, am I the problem? Or if you're thinking, well, I don't know if this person is really narcissistic and so I don't want to leave or I just don't want to end the relationship if, if it's something that could be fixed or if it's something that this person could make changes about. Let's talk about those things right now. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and recover and transform your life after narcissistic toxic relationships. The thing is, we are not here to diagnose people. We talk about narcissism a lot, and here's why. Narcissistic traits are very common in the way people relate to one another in toxic relationships, okay? We cannot diagnose here whether someone in your life is or isn't a narcissist. You can watch the behaviors, you can look for the traits, and you can decide for yourself if that toxic behavior is something you want to continue to deal with, if that's something that you want in your life and if that is something that you think with the person that you're dealing with in your individual situation is workable or not workable, okay? And that's one reason that there's coaching offered so that you can talk it through and figure out for yourself whether this is something that works for you or not. I'm not here to tell you to leave people, to stay with people or anything like that. I think you know what's best for your life and I'm here to help you guide yourself through your own journey of healing from these toxic relationships. Okay, what we do talk about here are the toxic traits people have in relationships. And we then further that into what happens when the person really is narcissistic. Okay, if you're seeing a lack of empathy, if you're seeing low empathy or zero empathy coming from another person, the chances are that they are high on the narcissistic spectrum, whether they could clinically be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder or not. Someone that is high on the narcissistic spectrum isn't likely to change. They are most likely not able to change because the empathy in us sometimes is what spurs the drive to change. We we see that our behavior might hurt someone, and so we find other ways to cope with whatever it is that created that behavior if it appears to be toxic, and change parts of ourselves so that we're more healthy in relationships. So it can be really challenging for people because they have someone in their life that's treating them in a way that makes them feel bad. They see gaslighting, they see projecting, they see all of these toxic traits that we talk about here, and they think, okay, I don't want this in my life, but if that person really isn't a narcissist, and I leave them and they change, then what? Okay, here's the thing. If you leave them and they change, then they've changed for the better for everyone in the world, right? For their own life. And perhaps it won't serve your life, but it may serve the world, right? If you leave them and they change and they truly become a better person, then good for them. You know what I mean? The thing is, we can't hold on to relationships that are toxic. We can't hold on to the repeated patterns of toxic behavior from other people thinking that it will change. If we're not seeing the change, the chances are the person either can't or won't change. That's what's important, not whether or not we can clinically diagnose the person with NPD. Now, if you really need that diagnosis, you're going to have to get the person to go to a licensed professional who can perform tests and get the diagnosis if that person is willing to go tell the truth, be who they are, and totally fine with the fact that they're probably going to have a narcissistic personality disorder diagnosis, okay? Because if you, if you ask someone who is a covert narcissist, someone that thinks that everyone else is the narcissist, but really it's, you know, then you're not going to have any change. So, I mean, if you're seeing patterns of toxic behavior from a person in your life and you approach it from a healthy standpoint, if you approach that person with I statements, with clear speech, with non-accusatory conversation, with questions, with an open heart and an open mind, and that person is shut down to responding to you if they are not willing to talk about it, if they are not willing to engage in fixing anything in themselves for the relationship, what it shows is a lack of emotional maturity. Narcissists, as we know, have a very low emotional maturity, but so do a lot of other people. And so someone with a very low level of emotional maturity who isn't willing to make change for their relationship and for their life and for the people that love them and for themselves, that person is very unlikely to make changes at all. Are you willing to spend your whole life 
waiting for somebody else to make the changes needed to be healthy and kind in a relationship. I mean, we're talking about the most basic things, kindness, polite, friendliness, seeing the good in others. You know what I'm talking about, these basic things. So if you're questioning whether someone is a narcissist and you're staying with that person because you just don't know, Start looking at the traits that you see. Start looking at the way you want your life to look. Start looking at your own feelings of how you feel in this relationship. Start asking the person real honest questions from a place of compassion, honesty, and openness and see what kind of response you get. If you get a good response, they go to therapy and they fix themselves, well then you probably weren't with a narcissist. If they don't, or if they say they will and they don't, if they future fake, if they start, if they give you love bombing and then snap right back into being toxic, you're probably dealing with someone that isn't willing to make change, whether or not they are narcissistic. You guys hit the thumbs up on these videos. Check out some of the other videos here on covert narcissism because that might answer your questions as well. And I'll see you over there on another video.